So this is the Mead 16 inch light bridge. Uh, always wanted a really big daub. Uh, I'd love to get an Obsession or a Star Master, but uh, the price on the Mead is just irresistible. So this is a big scope. It comes in uh, two big boxes. The one was so big I couldn't uh, fit it in my car. So I had to take the components out. Uh, even then it was uh, tough squeezing my dog in. Uh, but anyway, in the big box, um, you get the bottom uh, assembly with the mirror, the upper tube assembly with the secondary a dust cap for the, uh, the mirror, and the truss tubes. That's all. That all comes in the big box. And then there's that big flat box underneath, and in that is the base and some hardware and screws and stuff like that. So in that flat box, you get the components for the base. You have to put this together yourself. It takes about an hour. Comes with little hardware, screws a little hex wrench uh, and an eyepiece holder that you put on the side. Before I put the scope together I tried to see if the base would fit through my doorway and uh, I proved that it makes an excellent dog gate but other than that it's not going to go easily through a doorway. Here are the side pieces. Those are the uh, altitude bearings there that you can see and they're they're made of felt which is the uh, first time I've had that as a bearing surface and I think that's in part because of the, the weight of the scope is so heavy. Um, that the felt gets compressed and uh, moves fairly smoothly. And that's the azimuth bearing. It's a steel roller bearing, two plates of steel with a, a plastic assembly in between the two pieces. And that will go between the two base plates, the two large melamine base plates. You can see I've assembled half of it here. Uh, what I usually do, and I think is recommended generally, is that you assemble all the screws fairly tight, but not totally tight until you get the total assembly in. And there you can see the bottom of the base and now the, the round base plate, the top of the two base plates is going to connect to this unit, which is what we're doing here. So this is the top plate of the two bottom plates. Uh, what goes in between those two plates is the steel roller bearing that you saw. And that allows the scope to uh, move smoothly on its azimuth axis. So here we are with the top plate. I, I took a couple of close-ups so you can see the tolerances in terms of the countersinking that they do on the, on the construction. It, it's pretty good. I, I wouldn't call it super high-end, but for again, for the price, it's, it's very well done. Here's the knob to control the pressure on the top and bottom plates to sandwich on that steel roller bearing. Here there's no pressure and the scope is spinning freely and you can see the bearing works pretty well. Uh, a couple of little steps attaching the eyepiece uh, rack to the side of the scope. Once you're finished, you've got a 130 pound, 16 inch daub. You need a wheelie bar from JMI or this scope buggy. They're both good products and they keep that melamine and particle board away from the moisture, which you really want to do with these scopes. And there's the uh, bottom tube assembly with the mirror in it, uh, with the dust cover on top of the mirror. And there's the car that uh, all the unassembled components uh, fit in and they had no problem fitting in that way with the assembled base might be different. I would add a little felt piece or a little rubber bumper inside the base where the tube hits. I would also get a light shroud from someone like Astro's app or another third party. Here's the uh, focuser. I also got a uh, dust cover from Astro's app. And here's the whole thing assembled. And as you can see, it has that characteristic feature of a new scope, an overcast sky. The new scope curse set in and uh, I wasn't able to view for the first week. So really looking forward to first light with the light bridge. Mm -hmm.